Good evening, everyone. I wanted to welcome you to Nursing 669, Children's Health, Therapeutics and Management. My name is April Domino, and I will be your professor for the next 12 weeks. You'll find that most Sundays I will develop a um, video for you to go over the expectations for the week but I figured since this was our first class together that it would be a good idea to go over some of the course content to make you a little more familiar with it. Well, you have been in now, you've been through 667, 668. Now you're entering Children's Health. So you are uh, not a novice regarding Canvas and the format of the coursework. So. This is a 12-week course, and the course is laid out in modules, just like your other courses have been. And you can access material either by going to week one or going to modules on the left-hand side. I don't have this totally filled out yet, but I will. You have your syllabus also, but we're going to start by going through week one. Now, week one this course is a little different because you have a paper due week one. And that paper is going to be due day seven of week one, which is Sunday. I strongly encourage you not to wait until Sunday or Saturday to start it. I, uh, because you will need to submit this paper through Turnitin and you must have a relatively low score. I don't accept papers that are greater than 25%. I'm also a stickler for format. So I expect your papers to be graduate level papers with headings, a title page, references, and APA format that is excellent. I also expect your grammar to be well executed and I expect your punctuation to be um, correct also. So I really want you to take the time to go through your papers to ensure that your formatting is correct. I strongly encourage students to download a free program called Grammarly. It helps you a great deal uh, with grammar and punctuation. It, it shows when you're repeating words too often. Uh, I'm in my doctorate program right now and I use it for all of my papers. So I strongly encourage you to do that. I also utilize APA programs like Perla and Reference Point um, to help ensure that you are uh, using the proper APA format. So here we go with Module 1, and these modules are all laid out similarly. We start out with our weekly devotion <clears throat> and an overview of the weeks, uh, of what the topic for the week will be. The topic for week one is childhood obesity. And this goes a little more in depth as to uh, the gravity that this has. Uh, we have readings and uh, a video. And the child development uh, that you're going to see from the uh, National Institute of Health is excellent. Anything that you get from NIH or CDC, they're fantastic resources. We have PowerPoints with audio on them and we have our assignments for the week. So you can see here that your introduction forum is due and that's due Wednesday. I'll show you our course calendar in a minute. And then you have three opportunities to submit your paper through to turn it in. So the first time you, you submit it, you can see, oh my gosh, you know, it's, it's not appropriate. And, and when you're looking at, when I'm looking at plagiarism, I am uh, even more important than the percentage of matches that we see there. I'm looking for uh, sentences that are connected. Uh, when you're using sentences that are connected without citations, that's plagiarism. So I look at those Turnitin reports. And when you get yours, I want you to analyze it, look at it, and say, you know what, I'd better revise this because Professor Demito is going to go in and she's going to see that these are too similar. So you get three opportunities to submit your paper to get those numbers down and then you will submit it here for your final draft. 
as with any course, you submit that paper on Sunday and you uh, will get it back by the following Sunday. I normally grade papers very quickly. I try to get them back to you as soon as possible, but we do have one week to get those assignments returned to you. So let's see for the next week. <clears throat> this isn't the next week. I'm going to go to the next module. Just so that you can see. And then we're going to overview this a little bit here. So here we have our module two. And it talks about what's going on here, what this is the focus of. And this is uh, eating disorder, substance abuse, and mental health issues. And then you're going to start out with your case study discussion, your first case study discussion. I haven't yet put the groups together, but I will. Um, I'm going to set the groups up so that you can sign yourself up for the groups. I had to wait to see how many students I had in the section. I don't want to go too much into this because this will be our the focus of our next week's um, discussion on Sunday. And so this is going to be the focus of your case study discussion. Um, each group is going to choose a leader. And I want you to, I don't want one leader to be the leader throughout the entire 12 weeks. You're going to switch off. So, uh, but this week you're going to choose a leader for group two. And she will ensure that the assignment is distributed and that everyone is doing their share. I leave it up to the leader. If you have members of your group that are not, con uh, that are not participating fully and um, contributing to the material, you have got to tell me because these are group projects. So there's really no good way for me to determine, okay, Sally did this much, she gets an A. Sally did this much, she gets a D. I, um, so I, I expect you to be um, graduate level students and work collaboratively and that the group leader will notify me uh, if that's not the case. So let's go back to here to the modules. I haven't put my bio in yet, but I'm going to do that soon. Now, I like to get back to students as soon as possible. The best way to get in touch with me if you need to speak with me is through email. I work in the clinic as a family nurse practitioner, but I always have my smartphone with me, and I do try to get back to students as soon as possible. <clears throat> Now, if for some reason I don't respond to that email within two hours, I want you to email me again. If I don't respond again in another two hours, um, I want you to text me. And I will put my phone number in the instructor bio section. I'll do that within the next day. When you text me, please make sure that it is something that is of importance and that when you do text me, that you write the um, your 669126 because I teach I'm teaching five courses this term three pediatric and two advanced pathophysiology two so I need to know which course and section you're in because I have a many students so I want to make sure that I'm able to answer your question correctly uh, so I will get that instructor bio in. Um, if you need to contact me, in fact, uh, this is not a good way to contact me. I don't have access to it unless I'm on my computer, so don't use that. If you have a prayer request, please feel free to put that in there. And we have some APA format resources in the MSN handbook. This has all the regulations in there, like I have 48 hours to respond to an email, but I never take that long. If I take two hours, it's too long, and uh, one week to get assignments graded. It also says what your responsibility is as a student. So if you haven't had an opportunity to look through that, definitely do that. Examity. For taking your proctor exams, make sure that you feel very comfortable with this and that you sign up for your exams first thing. We have a midterm and a final in this course. 
and um, Dr. Blackman is the other professor, I believe, that's teaching one of the other sections. And um, I make it a point to do reviews. Last term, Dr. Blackman and I um, split them. I did the midterm and she did the final, so I anticipate that we'll be doing that this round also. So, but sign up for those right away. Okay. Let's go to the calendar. That's what I wanted to talk about, too. I try to give you as much direction as possible. So in the calendar here, you will find that you have your assignments listed here. And I do it by the week. And so you have your introduction forum due on Wednesday. And then let's go to March. Now you have your um, paper is due on Sunday. Then we start week two. Your first post for that group discussion is on Wednesday. So I would advise you to not wait until Monday to start talking about it. I've got to get those groups set and you've got to get working on them because it's going to be sooner than later. Then you need to have your response posts due by Sunday. And you'll see that throughout the program that I do that. Now, your calendar isn't going to be as busy as mine is because you've only got one or two classes in there, and I have five. But So yours will be much easier to, to look at. But I usually make the first post due Wednesday and your response posts due on Sunday. But look at this. Um, I definitely, I would be at a loss if I didn't have my little planner calendar that I put everything in. Uh, some people are magnificent with smartphones, and I utilize that also, but I uh, always revert back to the old school. Oops, there's me down in the corner. I forgot to turn that on. Um, I always revert to the old school paper calendar that I slip in my purse and everything is in there. So whatever works best for you is what you need to do. So... I'm going to sign off now because I want to get those groups done. And if you have any questions, please let me know. I look forward to working with you over these next 12 weeks, and I hope that um, you have a wonderful experience.